Oh, it announces it. <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right, well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us uh, this afternoon for a Smudgeable Making Workshop with artist Tracy Charette Fair. Um, Tracy has a exhibition currently at the Winnipeg Art Gallery in Kalmayuk, and it's called Heartbeat of a Nation, Métis Women 250 Years. And um, as sponsors for the exhibition, I'd like to thank the Manitoba Métis Federation uh, for their support and the Infinity Women's Secretariat for their support too. Uh, we have a lot of uh, exciting program, educational programs lined up uh, to accompany the exhibition. And uh, this is one of them, the Smudge Bowl Making Workshop, but then we also um, have the story of script with historian Dr. Fred Shore on Tuesday. And then we'll have the story of the flower beadwork people on Wednesday, September 1st. And it's all free on Zoom. So hopefully you can uh, tune in for a few of the um, programs and get a chance to check out the exhibition. So uh, with that, I will uh, turn it over to Tracy and Rachel, her cousin Rachel Charette. Um, so Tracy has traced her grandmother's history all the way back to 1770, uh, which marks 250 years. Uh, Tracy's exhibition, Heartbeat of a Nation, Métis Women 250 Years, um, is on at the Wag Kamayuk until November 6th. Uh, Tracy made 250 handmade smoke-fired bowls, which represent those 250 years to honor the lives of Métis women. Métis women have not received their due recognition in the birth of the Métis nation. So this is her way of bringing more awareness to the strength and resiliency of Métis women's lives to the community. So I will turn it over to Rachel and Tracy. Thank you, Julia, and welcome to everybody. I'm so glad that you all could make it for this session and everybody will leave with something in their hands, hopefully. And if you're not completed it today, you'll have time that you can do it afterwards. So actually, I'm gonna switch things just a little bit. I'm gonna introduce Rachel and Rachel is gonna start us off with, uh, with a prayer before we get going. So I think I will we'll do that and then I'll we'll come back to me. Is that okay with you, Rachel? Yeah, I was going to talk a little bit about just that smudge bowls also and smudging, but and then into a prayer. Is that does that sound good? Okay. okay. Well, then you know what? Then we'll go. I'll, I'll open up the. I'm going to open up the presentation first, and uh, and then we'll do it like that. Can everybody sit? I think that it is. Cord. Uh, Oh, I just press continue. Yeah. Okay. I'll just do this quickly, Rachel, and then we'll get to that. So this is Métis Kitchen Table Teaching Smudge Bowl Workshop. And uh, as Julia said, my name is Tracy Charette Fair and Rachel Charette is uh, one of my cousins and does a lot with smudging and there. So here we go. <laughs> Rachel gets to introduce herself and do a little bit of an <clears throat> overview to get things started. Okay. Um, hello, Tanshi, Buju. My name is Rachel Charette, and like Tracy said, I'm one of her cousins. Um, and I'm super happy to be here um, to help with the opening for the workshop. Um, it was too late for me to register because it filled up so quickly. Um, so when Tracy asked me to join to help with the, the opening, I was super happy because I thought, oh, good, I'll get in through the side door then. <laughs> so, um, so we're making smudge bowls today from clay. Um, and the reason why we use things like clay is because, first of all, a clay bowl makes a really good vessel to um, burn your medicines in. And usually we like to use something natural and something from the land um, when we're using our medicine. So, and we use different things. I think a lot of people see the abalone shells being used in uh, smudging, but I've also seen people use wooden bowls or metal um, pans or of course clay bowls. Um, when I've been out, out of the city and I didn't have anything to smudge on, I just used like a flat rock 
Um, I've also, uh, one of the offices I worked in, we didn't have a very big budget. So we used an old tuna tin can with the label torn off to, to <laughs> smudge in. So you could really smudge in anything, but it's really nice to have something that you, you made or something, um, you know, that comes from the earth um, uh, to, to keep and burn your medicines in. So, um, so basically there's a variety of medicines that we could use in a smudge. Um, some of the more common ones are things like sweet grass, which is a really gentle kind of kindness medicine. Um, and then there's cedar, which is uh, kind of a, a protection medicine. People use it a lot in ceremony. Um, people will put it over their doors or windows or even in their shoes to keep them uh, safe. And then um, sage, um, which of course grows all over the place just uh, throughout Manitoba. Um, I picked the sage uh, about a month ago, just outside the city. Um, and sage is used more as a cleansing medicine. So when you burn sage, um, it helps to sort of clear away negative energy um, or any kind of bad feelings um, and to invite in really kind of positive energy. And there's actually even scientific um, evidence to back that up. Like there's scientific um, studies that show that sage actually will clean like bacteria in the air. So, so there's like a science behind it, which is kind of cool. Um, but there's other things you could burn. I also, um, I'll use stuff like um, crushed um, bear root or diamond willow fungus. I'll usually sprinkle that over top of uh, burning ember of um, sage. And, and that just, um, it, it also sort of helps um, with like anxiety and, and, you know, when I'm feeling bad or if I'm helping someone who's going through a hard time, um, I try to use um, those kind of medicines that really just sort of help um, with those kind of feelings. Um, and then I also just want to quickly mention tobacco, which of course is the fourth main medicine that we use. And when we go out and pick these other medicines, we always put down a tobacco offering. Um, we also use tobacco when we are approaching an elder or a knowledge keeper and have a request. Um, and of course we use the tobacco in our sacred pipes um, to help us communicate with creator. Um, and there's a traditional tobacco mix that I actually use because I'm a former smoker. So I actually use more traditional um, medicines in my tobacco mix. So I don't use the nicotine one. Um, but basically the purpose of smudging is to help us. Um, and to help cleanse our space and protect our space and prepare for ceremony. So um, basically once we're done making our smudge bowls, um, I would suggest that you actually smudge the bowl first um, and then you could use it as part of your bundle to hold, um, to hold your medicines when you burn them, when you smudge. Um, I have a couple of bowls that I've gotten from Tracy, one of the first ones I've gotten with a bit of a, a Métis sash on there. Um, and I, I also use them sometimes just to keep my wooden matches or um, the ashes left over from my smudge. Um, I usually don't throw away those, those ashes. Um, usually I collect them for a while and then when the bowl's kind of full, I'll go out and I'll just sprinkle the ashes around my home um, just to, you know, to put them in a clean space um, back out on the land. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's lots of uses for these bowls, but it's nice to use them to smudge or to keep your, your burnt ashes in. Um, so I'm going to show you how I smudge, uh, and then I'll do the opening prayer. Um, cause I wasn't sure, like, you know, everyone had that familiarity with, with smudging. Um, so I have some of the, the sage. I of the leaves and basically I just crush them and roll it into a bit of a ball so that it um, it burns nicely like like that. I don't know if you could see. So I'll put it in my um, my bowl and I'll light it. Like I said, I usually use a match, although you could use a lighter. Um, and basically you want it to produce some smoke. You don't want a flame coming up. So I'll use a feather just to get that smoke going nicely. And um, usually I start out um, with smudging my hands. So down a little bit. I don't know if you can see my, there. I'll, I'll smudge my hands first. Um, and then I'll bring the, the smoke up over my head and hair. 
And then I might just sort of bring some of the smoke maybe over my forehead, just um, sort of to smudge my thoughts so that I have a good thoughts. I might bring it over my mouth just to help smudge my words so I have positive, good um, words coming out of me. Smudge my heart um, to help my feelings, any, any hard feelings I'm having or to just you know, have good positive feelings. And then I'll smudge over my entire body. And sometimes if you have an ache or a pain, you might wanna give that an extra smudge, you've got a sore shoulder or whatever. Um, and then I'll let that smudge just burn out. I don't usually just put it out. I just let it burn out, um, but I'll send some, some of that smudge out into cyberspace for everyone out there. Okay. Um, so like I said, usually I'll do my prayer while I'm doing my smudging. Um, so I'll just do it now. And usually when I pray, I, I start out by introducing myself to the spirits. Um, and I do that in one of the languages of my ancestors. I'm, I'm using Anishinaabe because that's what I've been taught to do. Um, most of the, my um, teachers are Ojibwe. So, Buju, Ajawashko, Asinikwe, Dijnikas, Mikaziju Dam. Creator, grandmothers, grandfathers, spirit helpers. Thank you for the gift of life and thank you for this beautiful day. We are grateful to have this time and space to share and to learn together. And we ask for a positive experience today um, in making these smudge bowls together. Ekosi, miigwech, thank you. back to Tracy, who's on mute. Okay, I think, thank you very much, Rachel. I'm just going to, I, what, wondering if anybody here would like to um, introduce themselves or, you know, I, I feel like I, I, I wanna kind of get some names and faces before we get started. So if you feel okay about it, if you could just introduce yourself and just uh, maybe say something about why you wanted to do this workshop. I think we'd have to unmute people. Okay, cool. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, we're here uh, in Winnipeg. Um, the reason why we wanted to do it was, well, for one, to be able to know how to make smudge bowls, but it's my mom's 74th birthday coming up, oh. so my sister wanted to do something with her. Great. That is nice. So, sorry, I'm Cindy Bueller. I'm Lily. And I'm Tanya. You nice. can't see Tanya. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, thank you. Nice meeting you. We're, we're actually from the Northwest Territories, but um, we live in Winnipeg, or my we sister- We moved here. Yeah, my sister uh, lives in Winnipeg. We live out south, like in Emerson. Oh, okay, neat. Yeah. Welcome. Well, thank, thank you. you. Okay. I'm seeing Debbie and Cindy below there. Did you wanna uh, just say something quick? Hello. Hi. Can you go first? No, you can go first. Okay. Hi, I'm Debbie. <laughs> I'm Cindy. <laughs> I am part of, uh, I, I am a member of the Infinity Women Sec Secretariat, and I uh, represent them on the LAC board in the Winnipeg region as well. And um, I smudge um, a lot, and um, I do have a abalone shell, but um, to, to make my own, I, I'm just so thrilled. <laughs> Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Yes, Great. thank you for this opportunity. I'm very excited to make my own bowl as well. I do smudging as well. Okay, great. Thank you. Welcome. Thank, thank you. you. I don't see anybody. I don't see all the people here, um, but if anybody else wants to Hello? jump in. Oh, Melanie. Hi. Hi. My name is Melanie. I'm a Métis woman, um, born and raised, I guess, in St. Eustache, Manitoba, so just outside of Winnipeg. Uh, my sister is also here. Her name is Allison. Hello, Allison. Um, I actually, it's so funny. I was supposed to go uh, pick uh, tobacco today at Aurora Farms. And with all the rain, I opted to not do that. And then my sister said that she was able to get a blob of clay for me. And I just felt so 
so happy and proud that I was able to do this with you guys. And I do a lot of smudging. I go and pick medicines. Uh, the majority of the stuff that I pick is um, sage. And I go all over the place. I do a lot of uh, driving around and adventuring, that type of thing to clear my mind. And I always find the best spots to go pick medicine. So mm -hmm. this is really, really uh, awesome. And I, I thank you very much for the opportunity. Great, thank you. Anybody else want to say something? No pressure. Hi, I'm, Hi. Indigenous, I'm the Indigenous Initiatives Coordinator with the Winnipeg Art Gallery. And I was the person handing out the clay to everyone. So I'm so glad everyone could come. And I'm here today with my mom, oh, Mary. <laughs> to make the bowls with everyone today. It's great to see everyone. Great, good to have you. Hi, well, my name is Barbara Valley, and I'm here with my daughter, Diana, and her cat, Indy, and thank you for the opportunity. Great. Hi. Welcome. Um, hi, everybody, my name's Dean. I use uh, he, him pronouns, and I've uh, just started kind of getting into my uh, culture. So I'm kind of signing up for everything I can find. Uh, I literally just did my first um, home smudge at my home. Uh, like three days ago and I've been doing it literally every day just because it feels um, so wonderful to to feel that connected so uh, thank you for allowing me in the space. Mm, welcome thank you. So I'm going to go ahead then and if anybody wants to uh, share anything as we go along uh, just feel free to do that. I like things to be as participatory as possible. But I just want to share just a few photos. Um, we were talking before about the abalone shells. So here is one that probably people that are smudging are familiar with. I've included some pictures of bowls that I've done. They can be for smudging, they can be for other things, but they're just samples and they're in no way um, expected that you make bowls like this, but it just is to show you the different options and the different ways and making a smudge mold does not have to be a decorative piece. It can be a piece, the, the main thing is that it's coming from your own hands and whatever fashion or whatever style or whatever way uh, you wanna make it is the right way to do it. So these are all some samples of bowls that are made by hand. Uh, this is the inside. Now, we're not going to be doing the glazing, the color. That is something that I add to some of my bowls, but it's not something we'll do as part of this workshop. Ours will be more like this. This is uh, just smoke and uh, clay and the, the, the neat things that you get with the smoke firing. We can talk a little bit about that later, but that, that can be part of the process. So basically ingredients for bowl making, really for bowl making, all you really truly need is clay and your hands. You know, really there's not really anything else that's essential, but there's some things that you can find in your kitchen. You can find their basic household items. You don't have to go out to any specialty store is to get some of the tools that might assist or enhance the bowl that you're doing. So clay, hands, a small amount of water for to make something called slip or glue if you're using the coil method or if you're adding anything to the bowl or the clay. That's one of the things that helps to reinforce and to make sure that it doesn't all fall apart or split apart or explode, which they can do in a firing. So we do, I'll be showing you these things as we go along. Any kind of forming tools, and forming tools I mean can be anything like, can people see me? Because I'm kind of um, off the grid myself here. Oh, there I am. So I can see what I'm doing. You can use anything to form. You're using your hands. You could use a spoon. Uh, you can use, um, there's other things like spatulas and, and I'll show you that. But for today, we really just need hands and our clay. Uh, a sponge. It can be any kind of kitchen sponge. And that is just for doing things. And I've just got a couple of, just for for smoothing the clay. If you're wanting to smooth, having a sponge and just a little bit of water is gonna help with that. If you don't have that today, that's fine because I'll show you other means. You can even use a little piece of cloth, just a, a damp piece of cloth if you want to with that as well. But like I said, basically you don't really need any of those things. Those are just all optional. Um, 
now if I can move my. So this is the, the technique that we're gonna be basically doing today. I'm gonna add by showing you a couple of other things too, but this is really all you need to learn how to do to make a smudge bowl. And that is a pinch bowl. And it's a very basic, it's ancient. It's been done by you know people for, I don't know how long, probably time immemorial is a basic pinch bowl. And so that's what we're gonna be doing. Now, I just wanted to say a little bit about the process. So we'll be making the pinch bowl or the, the smudge bowl today. And then it'll go back to the WAG uh, for firing. And then it'll come back to me. And once it's fired, and that's where I'm going to invite people to be part of the smoke firing process if you choose to. So a smoke firing is something that happens outdoors. It doesn't look quite like this. What we do is we take the finished bowl, the one that's been fired at the WAG, and I put it in with a fire. I make a fire in a garbage can basically. And then you get the different, um, you get the smoke treatment on, on the bowl. Your bowl might end up looking very much like this. This is a finished bowl. It's nothing fancy. But what it does has, it has a lot of life in it. This bowl has got fingerprints. It's got ridges. It's really, when I hold on to it, I really feel like it's a part of me. And that's something with your bowl. And you might end up making many bowls. You might, this might be the, the one off, but to feel the bowl, to know that that's yours, you don't have to get rid of those signs of life in the clay. They're really a neat part of it. So there's different ways that you can do that. Um, this is another bowl that I've got. I've been doing a little work with quill. And so this bowl, I've done a bit of a decorative thing. So if after your bowl is done, you wanted to just for whatever reason, for your own significance or purpose, as long as it's not flammable, you might want to attach beads or um, whatever, maybe something significant uh, just to, to give your bowl um, some, some added uh, meaning and attraction. So does everybody have their bowl? I'm not gonna just gonna stop this share. Does everybody have their clay? Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna lead you through something to start with and then we'll, we'll start with the making of the bowl. So I'm gonna ask everybody and I'm going to right now, this is my clay. I am not, I am not a traditionalist. Uh, I don't know if anybody know of the artist Casey Adams. She is an incredible artist and she has been doing clay as ceremony. So a lot of the work that she does, she digs her own clay. She, um, she fires it naturally. She doesn't use a kiln. Everything is outdoors. So she's recreating what our ancestors or the people before us would have done. So if you go to some place like the Manitoba Museum and you see some of the, the old pieces of pottery that they have there, those mostly shards, because a lot of it, pottery is, is fairly fragile, exists only in shards. Some of the bowls have been put together, but they're very plain. They're very, um, there is some decorative uh, stuff done to them, but other than that. So Casey does that and she actually teaches people uh, individually. But my clay comes from the sounding stone, which is the basically the clay depot and ceramic store in Winnipeg. So that's where I get mine because like I said, I'm not a traditionalist. So when I'm getting my clay, I am cutting a chunk of it. There are different tools you can use, just a piece of wire even, and put it like this. And I'm cutting into the clay and removing a, a slab of it. For this, I'm not gonna use the whole piece for this demonstration. So when you cut your clay, say you're getting it in this form, what you're gonna do is you're gonna make it into a ball. So do all of you have a ball of clay right now? Okay, so what I want you to do is just hold that clay in your hands right now. So just have it in your hands. And if you're okay with it, just maybe close your eyes as you're holding the clay in your hands and just getting a sense of what that feels like. Just if you close your eyes and you're holding the ball of clay in your hands, this is an opportunity to really get a sense 
of what it feels like. Um, even though this is a commercial bag of clay, it did come from the ground, it did come from the earth. And by putting it back in our hands, we're kind of bringing it back into a form, a more natural form. The heat from our hands, you'll notice that we heat up the, the clay uh, fairly quickly as we're holding it in our hands. So I'm just going to lead you through. It's not really a meditation. It's just a little bit of a, a mindfulness um, exercise and just getting to know that clay. So as you're closing your eyes and you're holding on to the clay, just bringing your attention, bringing your attention to the ha your hands, bringing your attention to that clay. Maybe taking a couple of deep breaths even, you know, breathing in. And then breathing out. And then another deep breath, breathing in. And breathing out. And just letting any stress or tension just dissolve as you feel the clay in your hands, molding it, exploring the surface, feeling the weight of the clay in your hand, getting to know that piece of clay. Maybe thinking about or imagining or knowing something that you are hoping to heal or to bring awareness to or uh, any prayers that you might say silently as you're holding that piece of clay. Just wrapping your hands around it. Bringing that energy, bringing that intention, whatever that might be, to that piece of clay. And just knowing that you're holding a piece of the earth, mother earth, nature. So as you're holding it, and now if you wanna open your eyes and bring your attention to the clay, you're gonna have a round, round ball. Mine is uh, what I do because I've got what I want is I don't want a lot of, I don't want any air bubbles in the clay. So this is where you get to take out a little bit of your tension on the piece of clay. <laughs> and when you're molding it, you just want to slap it somewhat. And what that does is it releases any air, but it also helps you to form uh, the piece. Yeah, I don't like that. Pardon me? This is better than a stress ball. <laughs> it is. And you know, if that's all you ever wanted to do with your clay, that's what you could do. But it's definitely, I think with clay, it absorbs. It absorbs some of our tension and our stress as we're doing it. So, and then you can roll it in your hands, whatever way you want to make it into a fairly round ball. Clay one of the things I don't work on the wheel at all. Sometimes people, when they think about ceramics, they think about the wheel, uh, but I don't. And so when you're working with clay in this way, it's really basically you and the clay. There's no intermediary. It's just you and the clay. But part of it, whether you're working on the wheel or whether you're working by hand, is you're working with the center. You're going to find the center of this piece of clay. And so that's going to be the first step. So when you look at this ball, and you kind of just give it a bit of a gaze, find a place that looks like it's the center of that ball. So I'm gonna just take a look. And when I find the center of mine, I'm just gonna take my thumb and just put an impression of my thumb into the center of that piece of clay. I don't know if people have questions. I'm, I should check the chat just in case. Okay. 
Okay. So now that you've got that, this is where the, the making starts. So I always hold on. To, this is a little bit awkward because I'm trying to do it uh, on video. But normally what I'm doing is I'm holding the ball of clay in my hand and I'm pressing further down with my thumb. You don't want to go too far, but you're pressing it in so that you're getting a deeper impression. And it's kind of at the center of that ball of clay. Is everybody okay so far? <laughs> now that I've got that, you can just watch me too before you get started if you want to do that. And, and just a reminder, there's no right or wrong. So if you're feeling, oh, I got to get it right, I got to make the teacher happy, or I'm going to do make a mistake, it's all part of it. So don't worry. I'm going to ask that you don't worry about that. So I'm just going to show you my method. So what I'm doing is I've got my thumb and I'm starting to work. Let's see if I can. I want you to be able to see part of the process. So what I'm doing is I'm working my thumb. I'm holding and I'm working my thumb to create a wall as I go around in a circle. So it's just a very gentle pressing into the clay. I've got it at the center and I'm just forming a wall and I'm doing it in a circular fashion because the one thing that I do wanna do is I wanna keep that circle uh, going. You don't wanna end up with an ashtray. <laughs> Sometimes people right away, they cover the thing in water and then they put it down and it goes flat and it turns into an ashtray. So I always tell people we're not doing that. But it's just, so if you wanna start, it's just a very gentle, no right or wrong. You might find that the clay is cracking a bit in places, but that's okay because um, it tends to, uh, we tend to, um, water, uh, it dries out a little bit, but it's not dangerously, you know, dangerously dry out. So as I'm working it, so does everybody feel ready to, so you're starting to, so when you're holding it, right now it's fairly heavy and it's about, right now it's about this big. So I'm gonna keep working with it. So I'm pressing into the wall and I'm kind of trying to do it from the bottom out. So as I'm doing it, I'm continuing to work from my thumb. Once you get into there, it's really, I, I would normally hold it like this and I would be doing a pinch pull like this. I just, it's just hard for me to be able to show you but I would have it in my hand like this. When you have it in your hand, you're kind of keeping the shape of it nicely as well. And so then I would just continue. So does anybody want to um, say anything about what's happening with their bowl? Because we're not in a classroom, like we're not in a room together, it's it becomes a little bit more challenging, you know, to uh, make it a group. Very nice. Very oh, oh, nice. It's, oh it's, yeah. It's cracking, but does that matter? Like it's that's cracking. okay. That's yeah. okay. That's okay. Just keep working with it. Okay. Yeah. You just thank keep, you. Just keep working with it. It's not awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Mine has mine has cat hair in it now. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anything like that's going to burn off if it's got your hair or cat hair or whatever it burns off in the kiln it feels deep like it it seems like it's really that's, do i need to make it wider yeah if it's fairly thick like that deep. you're just yeah. going to keep gently doing what i'm doing here every okay. once in a while because the bottom will stay thick every once in a while i put my hand in and I just gently press the sides and the bottom. And then that means it's also working. You're evening out your, your wall and, and the bottom. So, and if you keep it in your hand as you're doing that, you're keeping the, the roundness. Now you might not want that shape. Eventually what you're gonna be doing is widening it a bit because you, you may want, depending on what the, the shape of the smudge bowl 
is that you want. Do you want a flatter bowl? Do you want, so I'm just continuing. So you're gonna end up with something like that. And like I said, it, um, it's not perfect necessarily. So I don't know if I'm gonna to have to put this down here. So I'm gonna put this down here. So right now I've got this just sitting here for the moment and I can sit it down and it kind of creates its own bottom here. So that is one. Now I had a couple of bowls that I'd started earlier and this one is fairly thin. You can see it's still a bit floppy. So you can't do too much with the clay when it's like this, but if you let it sit for a little bit, that's why this process is, is not gonna be exactly like it is, uh, you know, when you have more time, is I leave things in stages sometimes. I'll start with something and if it's still fairly wet or still fairly uh, floppy, I'll let it dry, I'll let it out in the air and I'll let it dry a bit and then I'll come back to it. So I'm gonna show you a couple of things that you can't do today, but the, the couple of things that you might want to try um, another time. Some of it you will be able to do today, but some of it you may come back to another time. So here is my bowl again. And here I have a sponge that's just slightly damp, okay? And what I can do is if I want to grow the bowl and give it a bit of moisture, I'm working on from the inside and I'm just wiping it slightly and kind of increasing the, getting the bowl um, smoother and a little bit bigger. Now this piece of clay that I'm working with right now is quite small. I think it's smaller than the ones that you, that you had. Uh, so but you can see how it's got quite a few crackings and things like that going on. I'm not worried about that right now. In fact, I might not worry about it at all. I like bowls sometimes that have that, that roughness to them. So I'm gonna show you a couple of things, like I said, that you don't necessarily have to do today, but just for future information. If you have, Your volume's off. Tracy, we can't hear you. Somehow I got muted. There you go. <laughs> okay. So there's ways of shaping your piece. Like I said, don't worry about this. I'm just going to give you some instruction that you might be able to want to use uh, another time. So what I can do is if I want to smooth out some of this, I can take a spatula. And this one is quite dry, so it is cracking quite a bit. So I might want to turn it over. And here, I'll do this again. So this one, if it's really quite um, cracked, I will take this sponge and I will smooth it. Sometimes you see people doing things like, um, like I said, putting a lot of water. You don't want to put too much water on it. This is a very light, very light, uh, uh, lightly uh, wet kind of sponge because your bowl will collapse. When you're working by hand, things might collapse on you um, when they get too wet. So it's not necessary. But I know when I was in elementary school, the teachers who really didn't know how to teach this stuff gave us water and clay. And of course, as kids, we had a lot of fun with it, uh, but it didn't necessarily make for lasting things. So basically, I'm just smoothing it out a bit just to get some of that cracking. Does anybody have anything like that with them? Um, if you should need it, you can even use like a cloth, a very lightly wettened uh, cloth or something like that, if you would like to uh, smooth out your bowl as you're working with it. And feel free to comment or to ask questions. 
usually with a clay workshop, it's a really neat when everybody's together, it can go silent for periods of time as people are immersed. So I'm only talking uh, constantly because <laughs> partly because that's what I do, uh, but just to keep us together in the process. Well, it's okay if the top of the thing you said cracks a little. Yes, so what you can do with that Melanie too, is if you take that damp cloth, you can just wipe, slightly wipe those uh, cracks out. Okay. Just gently. Because they can, it can split completely, you know, and you don't really want big splits. So the, and I don't know what the state of your clay was either when you got it. So that's the other thing. I don't know what the, now here I've got this, kind of split and I'm not too worried about that because what I'll do is I'll just squeeze some of it back together so it's not really a big deal the bowl's not finished yet okay so I'm going to show you something else and it is something else like that you can try doing when you if when and if you choose I'm just going to show it because it is a technique but it's not required today but it's something so this is something that it's just a pole with, <laughs> my husband made these for me. He makes me my tools sometimes. And it's just a rounded out. You can use almost anything, but I've created an anvil. You can even use a smooth rock or something. But the whole point of this tool is I place it inside. So here I've got a bowl on a stick. And what I do with that, oh. because I find with my age and the my hands, I've been making a lot of bowls. And if I'm pinching that many bowls and only pinching, I get a lot of pain. This is also a traditional uh, technique is the paddle and the anvil technique. Oh, Melanie, that's great. You've got your, you've got your wooden spoon. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> And then you can reposition it. I sit this bowl on the this. And I go around and but like I said, this this is okay. You can I'll show you how to do this with your hands as well, without a tool or without. And so what happens is I'm starting to get, I don't wanna make it too thin, but things are starting to be more bowl-like. And when I let it dry a bit, I usually put it upside down just for a little bit of time, just to let it sort of settle and get to a point where they call it leather hard when your clay is leather hard, uh, you can actually do quite a bit with it. That's when you can do carving or um, you can manipulate it without it collapsing or falling apart. So sometimes it takes, you know, about an hour of it sitting. Uh, if you're trying to dry it out so that you can do more with it, you can put a little fan on and you can dry it out that way too. So how are people doing with, um, with the bowls, with the, the pinch bowl? Uh, do these shrink at all? They do shrink. So they shrink in the drying process. Ooh, that's nice. Pardon me? Sorry, I'm talking. I should turn this that's off. Okay. <laughs> they shrink a bit in the drying process and then they shrink in the firing process. So what you get, so a bowl this size is going to lose, I think it's about uh, 10 to 15% of its uh, volume in those processes. So the drying and the, so if I'm just working, pinching, I'm still pinching and you can do this for a while just to get the walls where you want them to be. And that is kind of intuitive, you know, like how, how. Um, so they can be as fat or as skinny as you want. Exactly, but I wouldn't make it too fat. If it's okay. too fat, it's gonna be really heavy. And it means there's a lot of clay that you could have um, you could have taken advantage of. 
Is this too fat? Maybe turn it around a bit so I can see. I'd say it's pretty thick uh, okay. on one side of it. It looks like one side is maybe like thinner. this. Yeah, it's a little bit thicker, but you can, you know. Keep pinching, keep pinching. It's hard for me to tell because I can't feel it. So oh, okay. I think you can still keep pinching a bit. Okay. You don't Thank want you. to be too thin because what we're gonna do is look at carving some design out of it if you want to. We're gonna, once we get our bowl, uh, we can look at doing some fine, some finessing of the bowl. So that could be uh, doing some drawing or carving um, into the bowl while our session is on today. But it, the trick is to get the bowl in the state that you would like it. So mine has lots of cracks. Okay. Do you Am I just like covering them on the surface so I can't see them? Well, do you have a cloth or something? It can just be, yeah. a, okay, so if you wet it slightly, yeah. you can do what you would do with a sponge mm -hmm. and you can just, oh, yeah. just, cool. use the just uh, wipe it over the cracks yeah. gradually. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna close those cracks. Okay, yeah, that's what I was wondering. And you can also wipe the center of your bowl. So if you do have a sponge, that would be great, but a cloth will do it too. So a slightly wet, and then you'll oh end up. Sponges. I always like the scent. I like the inside, you know, to to have. Um, I like it to be round. I like a round bowl, but I like the center to be kind of a little bit more pristine. Although it doesn't have to be. That's just my personal preference. So yeah. So any of you who are finding the cracking, just ha take a little bit of, uh, like I said, a little bit of water, a little on a cloth or a sponge. and you can close the cracks, smooth them out. How many people here, because I don't know, have done something with clay before? Anybody? No? Okay. Oh, I see Nikki. Yes. Okay, well, if you have, that's great. If you haven't, this is a perfect place to start. So that's really interesting. Melanie, can we see? So Melanie is doing a couple of things. She's using, um, what are you using to, as your paddle? Is it a wooden spatula? Perfect. That is an amazing uh, implement that you have there. That's why this really is kitchen table. The only problem, and I should have said this before, is that if you're using it on clay, you shouldn't really be using it for food anymore. Okay, it's a dollar store special. I can go grab. Okay, money. good. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want your best, you know, your best spatulas or something to be used. Yeah, you don't. <laughs> but that's a really good point too, is that you can pick up this stuff at the dollar store, so you don't have to go shopping for um, expensive supplies. So she's really working it with her hands and using the spatula. The other thing that you can do with those um, cracks is you can gently work them with a spatula as well. So you can smooth them, you can close them. And if you want to smooth out the outside, same thing is you can use a damp, your damp um, sponge or cloth. If you're working on the outside and you wanna keep the shape, I would suggest doing it gently as it's kind of sitting on its, so I don't know if you can see, I've got cracks and stuff in here that I'm working on as well. But the other side of it too, cracks can add a lot of character. So it's not necessary to get rid of all of it. Does anybody want to see something as you're working on your bowl? 
because I can show another technique. Like I said, you may want to, um, after today, you might want to do more. And uh, just so that you have a little bit more information, I can show you a coiling technique as well. Um, are you, anybody interested in that or? Yeah, that would be cool. Okay. Yeah. Too, can I please though just ask you, did I go down far enough? Like, How far I, down do we have to go? Like, is the bottom thin too? Well, the bottom shouldn't be as thin as the sides and that sides yeah. don't want too thin. So I think if you're feeling like it's there. I think I'm... Yeah. Because the bottom, if it's a little bit heavier is good because that's what holds your bowl. You need a okay. little more weight at the bottom. Thank you. Yeah, and because I can't be there in person, it's really hard to go because normally I would just, I would pick it up and I'd feel I it. I think plain. this is how high it is. And I think around yeah. here is my bottom. Uh, okay, so, okay. Can you open, show me from the inside too? Yeah. Okay, you know what, if you're good with that, it should be fine. It doesn't, it, uh, I'm almost afraid of saying, you know, go further and then you go too thin. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Thank you. I'll just leave you, it then. Your, do you want your bowl to be wider or do you want it taller? Taller. Taller? I don't know. That's the way it's been going, so. Okay, so what you can do, so this is where um, you can move outward with your bowl. So I'm just going to show, I've got a bowl here. So if I want it to go wider, then I'm going to start to expand the sides outward. So I'm, I'm widening. Okay. I was just getting scared because I was getting all, it, the more I went, I would see how more it's cracking. So I didn't know. You know what I would do, Barb, is I would get a damp cloth and start giving well, that got these bit. things those are great actually just don't put too much water on them okay. and start to work the the clay a bit with okay. the uh, sponge and right. that get rid of some of the cracking okay. and once you've got rid of some of that cracking then you can spend some time so widening, widening it so that you've got something that's more um, okay. and it can be as as wide as you want it you just don't want to make it too thin that's okay. all So while you're doing that, uh, just, and if you've got questions, just ask me or just say something, but I'm gonna show you how to do some coiling as well. So like I said, if you wanna continue and do another bowl at some point. So what is that? What I did is I created a little mini sort of pinch bowl. I made a small uh, version of one. And then what I did is I did something that's called scoring and you can take, all you need is you need a fork. And basically what you're doing is roughing up the clay on the edge of this bowl because you're gonna attach some coils, okay? So that's the first bit. And then I will, I'm gonna do a coil. So I'm just gonna take a small piece of clay and I'm going to work it in my hands, kind of like making a snake. If you ever remember making snakes uh, with plasticine, when you were kids, that's basically what you're doing. But once I get to a certain point, I'm gonna roll it. And I'm gonna roll it till it's about the, the thickness of my little finger. And one way of doing it, rolling it, is starting at the center and moving outward. And you'll find that you end up with this really nice evenly, semi-evenly, made coil. And this is done, uh, uh, the traditional pots that you see, this is a, a major um, ancient method as well. I don't know why it's coming out kind of flat. Well, it's not quite going to be my fingertip, but it's going to be about the right size. So what I'm gonna do, I should have just a little paintbrush here. I don't know where I have my paintbrush. Oh, here. 
So I've just used a little uh, paintbrush and I've made something, well, I was kind of making something. It's basically just clay and a bit of water. And I make a little bit of a clay glue. This is a really uh, basic and not very high tech thing I'm showing you here. And there's clay, there's ceramic artists that are much more adept and careful about some of these things than I am. So basically I've got some clay water is what it is. And what I do is I add it to the bowl where I did that. So I've just wet the sides and then I take this piece and I can do this with a fork, but I'm going to do the same thing to this piece where I'm going to attach it. What this does is it creates, uh, helps to attach because you're creating, a, I don't even know the name for it. And then I take that clay glue and add it to here. And I'm not going to need this whole piece, but then I'm going to take the serrated edge and attach it. Just lay it onto this piece that I have here. And I only need about this much, so I'm going to snip it off right about there. And that's my first coil. But what I'm going to do with that cause, I'm not going to leave it like that. I'm going to just take my finger and I'm going to smooth the clay and attach it. And I take some off the top like this to really make it work. see how it's whatever you're making doesn't tend to be very pretty right away so just in case you're uh, worried about that so basically I can keep doing this until I have I could have with coil I could do a huge thing I'm not going to but I'm going to do the outside of this you can also use a tool like a knife or something to attach. Right now I'm using that serrated edge. So basically it's attaching your coils. And then I can smooth it out. I can and usually you would do about probably do about three coils before you do the, the smoothing process. So what you can do is you can really start building something. Uh, and oftentimes like with coil, you can go a bit bigger than you can with the pinch bowl. So it gives you some more options. So that's where, or you might make a pinch bowl and you wanna add something to your pinch bowl. So that's where, say you wanted to add a rim or something decorative, you can do that with coil. And then again, using tools or a sponge. Earlier I was saying you can use just about anything for smoothing and here I have a plastic spoon and that works really nicely on something like this too in bringing those coils, smoothing the coils out with a spoon. Okay, so how are people doing with their, and you don't have to show it if you don't want, but where are people at and who needs excellent? That is really nice, Melanie. Very nice, Rachel. Beautiful. Yeah. 
Is anybody having a struggle with theirs that, or, or want uh, some advice with theirs that you haven't asked about at this point? Because once we get to a certain point, I just want to introduce you into doing some uh, design on your bowl as well, which is really fun to do. And the design you can do for hours sometimes, just creating, uh, carving or designs into your piece. So are people ready for that? Oh, one thing I want to tell you, because I know I'm going to forget, forget this, at the end of the session today, you have to write your name on the bottom of your bowl, because I guarantee you, you will not remember which one you made. I've taken, I've tried to take people's really beautiful pieces, <laughs> it turned out they weren't mine. <laughs> So you want to make sure that you've got your name carved into the bottom of it once you finish the bowl. So what kind of designs do you think might be? Some can be very simple, some can be more intricate or elaborate. But if you had a bowl like this, what do you think you might want to do? You can leave it, of course, and not do anything. But what are some thoughts that people have about what you might want to do with it? I know that I wanted a flower. Okay. And an infinity sign, either one. Oh, okay, so you want to do an infinity sign and a flower or what, which is fine, you can do both. Whichever will fit I, I, okay. as I draw them, right? Okay, good. So if you're not comfortable with drawing per se, there's different things. So if I've got a bowl like this and say I wanted to just do a bit of an edge, I'll set it down here. So you can see what I might do, and this is a very old thing. This is a rounded bottom is I could just do some impressions yeah. and create a pattern. Okay. Now this is fairly floppy right now. I would wait until it's a little bit more, more secure okay. normally, but you can do that as one decorative element. So, so that is an option and that can look really nice when your bowl is coming out of the smoke fire, just that can be beautiful. And some of these, these cracks, I wouldn't even worry about so much because they would really add a dimension to it. If you want to, if you're, if you're looking at wanting to draw a design, you're going to need something pointy. Like if you've got a pointy knife, I've got this really pointy um, tool, but I could just as easily use the tip of a, a knife or something. So if you have, oh yes, somebody has a carving tool, Barb. Excellent. So only start this when you feel ready, that your bowl is really ready, that it's the shape that you want, because this is one of the final things. So you don't want to do this too soon but I'll give you a demonstration to start with and then when you get to it. So if I'm doing a flower on a bowl, I tend to, this is just me and everybody needs to do their own way of doing it, but I just have this love of finding the center of the bowl. So that might be something I start with and then I might build it up with petals and you can do a very simple, where you're not really carving even, where you're just scratching into the clay as well. So you don't have to do anything too elaborate. So there you can start with that, you can create stems, you can go bigger. A lot of the bowls that I've made, I've tried to do kind of like a Métis uh, floral uh, pattern because the, that's what we're known for is the flower beadwork, but floral designs and embroidery and beadwork and quill work as well. And so this kind of is within that, it's not a tradition because I don't know of any traditional uh, pieces that were done like that, but it's something that's fun. So for me, I'm just building up on that flower, but I could just do something very simple. I don't have to. 
what I would need to do is what I do is I start my design, but I don't start refining it just yet because it needs to get to a little bit of a more of a leather hard stage. If I start refining it now, which I could, you're going to get a lot of messy clay. If you're okay with that, and if you have a carving tool, you can clean it up as you go. This is a standard tool and this I use very little else this is one of the main things that I use because it's got the end that's curved and it's got the pointy end so it's like you can do both but you can also like I said find a kitchen implement of some kind however and I should have said this before if you use it for this don't use it to eat with again because clay is actually clay can actually be toxic and if you're using clay over a period of time, people will be known to get lung disease. Now, it's not likely anybody here that will happen to them from doing an occasional uh, piece of clay or a one-off uh, piece of clay that's not gonna happen to you. But just keep in mind if you're doing it in your kitchen to really clean up well, because it's the clay dust after the clay dries uh, that becomes the problem. And if that gets into your dishes and stuff, you don't want that into your, um, you don't want that getting into your cutlery or your dishes or anything like that. So, so it's just to be do a good cleanup after and not reuse the. So now that I've got this and I've got this carving tool, what I start to do is very gently as I just start to. I start to refine the design and I can do that in a number of ways. I don't have to go too deep. Uh, and when it partially dries, you can go back to it and really clean it up so that it's what you, but like I said, it could just be a scratched in design. And what happens, even if you scratch it in, you're gonna see that design once this is fired and you put it in the fire, the fire is gonna enhance the lines uh, that you've made in your piece. So you're gonna get a really, um, hopefully, a really uh, nice uh, enhancement, you know, to to the bowl. Now, who was it, Barb? You said you wanted to do the infinity symbol. Yes. Again, you can just do that by drawing it in. I'm doing a kind of messy one here. So however you want to do that, you could do it, you could do a series of them yeah, look at, in the bowl, you know, wherever you want to. I get it to view myself. You're what? Sorry, I keep forgetting to unmute myself after I say something. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this, like I said before, this is a bowl that doesn't have any decorative work and it's actually fairly rough. If you can see, I left, I left uh, cracks in it and I left finger marks in it. But what's different about this bowl is I use something called terra sigillata, which is a naturally, it's an also ancient. It's a naturally occurring slip. It's basically liquid clay with a couple of, with a um, another sort of chemical in it that, that you make and that gets applied when this when this piece is dry, when this becomes bone dry, I apply the terra sigillata to the clay. And then once that's on, there's a buffing with a stone. So the shininess of this piece comes from buffing the raw clay, the raw dry clay with a stone. And you get that beautiful shine with the terra sig. Again, that's not something we're going to do with this just because we don't have that ability uh, for me to get that to you or to do it. Uh, but if you're ever taking a class and you're interested in doing more, um, that would be something that you could learn for hand building stuff. So how's everybody doing with their bowl so far? What I can do is I can be quiet now <laughs> and we can work, you know, just do whatever. Oh, very nice, Melanie. Oh, make that look, let's see that again. Did you want to show us? 
Okay, do people see that? Yeah, perfect. And you know, then you're creating your own. And you don't have to be somebody that is um, where you consider yourself, you know, super talented, which I really disagree with that term. You can make your own design and it can be beautiful and you don't have to be a professional to be able to do that. I'm using a turkey baster. Oh, you're really innovative. <laughs> I did that not long ago. I used the turkey baster for something I was doing with my clay and my husband's trying to make a turkey. He's going, what happened to the turkey baster? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Just as you're working, I'll show you a couple of things. If any of you are really looking to get into doing clay and if you don't want to create your own designs, you can buy um, their on a rubbery kind of thing. They're like a stamp and you can press these into clay and get a design. So I did a sample here on slab. This is called slab. And so I pressed that in and um, with slab, that's a whole nother thing. But if you can get do that in a, you could do it in a bowl. You'd have to be careful how you press it in, but you could into the surface of it if you wanted to do that. I like it when people do their own design, but if you're wanting something, and that can look really nice too when you're, um, once your bowl is, is done, it, the, the textures and the lines. But I think whatever you do is probably best. A um, couple of things that I've gotten, you can, get a stamp if you really wanted to, you know, do something and you can stamp the bowl too. And again, these are just all extra little. So what I did is I just create, did a stamp in the bottom of this bowl. Dish, I think this is actually a dish, not really a bowl. I'll just show you um, another little technique. And um, again, like I said, you can do just about anything, but say you wanted to create some simple markings, you can just take a sharp piece and you can just do some scratching on the surface as well, which can be quite, quite nice. You can do a line all the way around if you want to create kind of a faux rim and then it's just something I enjoy doing sometimes and then I create a design within that um, and so it looks like it has a rim but it really doesn't it's just a, a line going through Another thing that I've done, and these are just ideas again too, is creating a series of lines and circles or designs inside the bowl that are not, again, drawing per se, but just adding some design.
Like I said, I'm going to be quiet now, but if people have things that they would like to share or they would like to talk about or questions. Uh, if Can I you see some of your designs, ladies and gentlemen? Yes, that would be nice. Ooh, that's nice. Can't I see? Oh, that's perfect. Wicked. Ooh, that's nice. Oh, that's nice too. Oh my goodness. Wow. Thank you. Hi, Tracy, can I ask a question? Tracy? Yeah, she's waiting. I don't know how I got muted. Oh. Yes. Um, so what happens now, okay, we're done our bowl and then we got to drop it off. Where do we keep it and stuff? Like, like for well, tonight and the next few days before we drop it off and that? Uh, one, I would let it dry um, a little bit slowly. So you might want to cover it just with a little, uh, a plastic lightly cover it with a plastic bag. I'll show you. Because you know, you can still come back to that bowl. You're going to find it's going to dry. You might find that there's other things that you might want to uh, finish on it. So I have mine here. What I will do is just very lightly cover it with something, uh, maybe till tomorrow, just so it dries a bit slowly. If it dries too quickly, you might get cracking. So I would give it and then take that off and let it dry completely for the next couple of days. Then you should be able to bring it back. So I would say, I'm not sure what we've got planned. Um, Cause it says on the note, it said Tuesday to Friday or something that you could drop it off. Oh, okay. In the so, email? Okay. So if you're going to drop it off uh, slightly damp, just don't let it be too damp because it might lose its shape or something might happen to it. If it's quite dry, um, just wrap it in something and uh, drop it off with them there. And I'm just wondering because we live out of town. Oh, where are you? Just in Selkirk. Oh, like I'm we're not, not that far away, but. You know what, you can, if you want, you can drop it off with me. I am, um, I'm just uh, south of Selkirk. Oh. Yeah. And then I can get it there. So, so 
so put your bowl on so i would say put it in a little box or just put it on something so that it doesn't collapse when you take it in it doesn't have to be perfectly dry when you drop it off because crystal who works at the wag she'll make sure she doesn't put anything in the kiln that's too wet if a piece is too wet it can it can explode in the kiln but she makes sure that she doesn't put anything in until it's dry enough but it usually takes a couple of days for it to dry so i would say uh drop it off sometime within a couple of days like give it a couple of days to dry a bit before you take it in okay we want to get these done not we don't want to take so within a couple of week i would say a couple of weeks where they're dropped off. Crystal will time the the firing. So with yeah, if you could drop your bowls off by the end of this week, that would be great. So if you get your all, because if we get the bowls all in around the same time, then the next step won't take as long, and then we can do the smoke firing within a couple of weeks. I would say maximum three weeks. We can do the final part and then you'll have your bowl back. Does that make sense or am I really just kind of running off it? <laughs> yeah, okay. So try to get your bowls in at the end of the week. For those of you in Selkirk, who was it that you said you're in Selkirk? Well, well, me and Diana. Oh, okay. So you know what, why don't you, um, I can get those from you. So why don't we arrange for me to pick them up? I come into Selkirk quite often and I can just pick them up and bring them in on one of my trips. Okay. Okay. So what you can do is get my email. I'm going to put my email in here and you can email me about where to, where to pick it up. If that's all right with you, like. Oh, it's fine with me. Well, thank you very much. I could actually fire them myself, but I'm not doing much of a firing right now. Okay, so for anybody that needs to get a hold of me anyway, uh, there's my email. Right? Yeah, and uh, yeah, so just uh, email me and I'll come and get them in Selkirk. I'm only a few minutes away from there, so it's not a problem. Thank you. Okay. Am I able to put a few stones inside of mine or will that not be good for the burning? That won't be good. Okay. Yeah. That's a good idea. <laughs> you know, it'll, it'll, uh, they'll, they'll explode. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Other than that, there shouldn't be any difficulty. I don't know how big of a piece of clay you got, but it looks like it was good enough to make a good size bowl. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to ask something similar, like, can, like, so to press things into the clay while it's still wet, that's not a good idea, like, um, like even cedar or mm. beads or, okay, because I saw you put, but the quill you added after, I guess? That's after, so once okay. the bowl is complete, yeah. what you could do is if you wanted to add things, what you can do in this bowl is you can put holes or things where you could attach things later. I'll show you a piece right now that I have. I was doing something, trying to fashion something like a head pot. So I was doing stuff like this. But what I did, because I wanted to attach things to it, is I put holes in when I was making it. And that way I could uh, run things through. So say you wanted to bead your piece, what you could do is you could, you could actually uh, puncture. So you could put holes in it where you could string something through. Oh. And then you could add things after the piece is done. So it's all and I've done stuff like that before. So if you wanted to add quills or if you wanted to add something, think about, but if you're gonna do that, think about how you would attach those. If you're gonna puncture some holes, how close do they have to be together um, to get that piece? Do you need to put two holes side by side 
one beside each other or one under, underneath each other to attach. So just give that some thought uh, before you put holes because your opportunity to do that is before, it's while the clay is still wet like this and it's malleable. So once it's dry, the piece will fall apart if you try to put, if you puncture anything in it or if you try. So that would be something to do now before, or before the end of the day or whatever. Uh, or before it dries is to think about, well, you know, if I wanted to attach something, what would that mean? Somebody said, you said a stone? Yes. Okay, so what size stone? Well, there, some of them are just like little small guys like, like this, whoops. So what you could do is um, you could glue Oh yeah, okay, I can do that after. You could make, you could glue right on the surface or you could make impressions where you're going to glue. Okay. So if you wanted it just on the surface with no indentation, that's great. But if it's a little bit of a larger stone, it might be good if it had a little bit of a spot for it to sit in and you could okay. glue it into that spot. What I did with my quills here is I glued this on. Now, what I could have done is I could have created um, some openings where I wove it into the piece. That gets a little bit more complicated, but so you can add it to the surface or you can, like I said, like say with beading, there you could bead a piece or you could make a beaded piece and then attach it, you know? So those are things, but that all has to be thought through before, before the piece uh, dries up. We can't do anything. Any other thoughts or questions? How are people doing? How are people feeling about their piece? We don't have to go right to four o'clock. So, but I want to make sure everybody beautiful. And the shape is lovely. Oh, you've got the infinity symbol. Yeah. So how are you feeling? Oh, the sound is not so good. So how are you feeling about that? Is it Diana? Yes, I think it's because we have two cameras going at the same time. I'm oh, okay. my mom's. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm feeling good. Good. Yeah, I'm trying to do it on both sides. So I've got this flower and I'm going to put another two infinity okay. symbols there. Nice. Yes. Yeah, good. So another thing is to remember once you've done this to make sure you put your name on it, even though you'll likely remember, especially when it's that personalized, uh, you'll likely remember which is yours, but just in case that nobody else takes yours either. They'll say, oh, that's a gorgeous one. I'm gonna grab that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I had a couple more images. I'm just gonna share that screen just once more. Well, maybe I showed them to you already. So that part, any other thoughts? Do people feel that they're gonna take this piece and continue working with it for a bit? No. Yeah? yeah. Who feels that they're finished at this at, at uh, this point? Yeah, we're done. So what I'm gonna- Back to mine tomorrow. Pardon me? I might come back to mine tomorrow. Okay, because that's something too, it doesn't have to be rushed through. Um, you can let it sit for a bit. Oh yeah, and you know what would be really nice if you come back to it when it's a little bit drier, mm -hmm. if you want, you can fine tune some of your carving or your, the scratching or whatever, yeah. and it'll be a little bit, little bit easier. It won't be as uh, mushy when you're working mm -hmm. with it. See Nikki and Marion working away. Yeah. 
If you guys don't mind, maybe before we're done, can I take a picture of everyone holding up their bowl to the screen? Sure. Absolutely. Wait, I gotta grab my phone, hang on. <laughs> oh, very nice. Oh, look, now we can see more people. There you go. Or Julia, maybe you could take a screenshot on your computer. Oh, yeah. I forget how to do that on a MacBook, but. Uh, Command Shift F4, try that. Mine still doesn't have any decoration. <laughs> That's okay, and you know what? You don't even <laughs> have to do any decoration. That's definitely an optional thing. No, I want to. I'm still like fooling around. Like, I'm comparing myself to my daughters and I shouldn't be, right? <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> mine looks like a tall vase. Not a <laughs> but you know what that's okay barb because it's yeah. whatever it is and you're gonna find that's gonna look beautiful oh my goodness oh my thank gosh thank you, you for guys are so good. yeah they're gorgeous they're every perfect. one of them wow look at that okay i'm gonna take a screenshot on three one two oh get in there <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you can't get everybody. Huh? Perfect. Thank oh, great. Oh, wait, no. Good. I missed some people again. <laughs> command shift. Oh, this way. Wait, command shift three. There we go. Okay. One, two, three. That's great. Got it. Did you make one, Julia? No, I didn't make one. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know. I, was, I, I didn't know if I would be able to do it and then uh, like facilitate and the chat. The fingers on the on the screen is not great. Or on the smush what I've already done. Oh yeah, yeah. Doing, right? Be careful. So for those of you who want to keep working on it, I would continue. Mm -hmm. And like I said, try to dry them a little bit slowly so you can cover it with something uh, for a bit before it dries. And then getting it to the wag before, I would say before the end of the week. But I keep forgetting what day, we're, we're Saturday. So if you can try to get it there before Friday and that way uh, Chris will be able to make sure they're good and dry and fire them. Hang a red ribbon down. I'm gonna need everybody's information for the firing yeah. if we do it here. So I don't know if Julia, if you can, get a list of um so i can contact we can contact everybody yeah i think nikki has that information so we can send that to you okay great and then we can contact because i'll pick up everything from the wag once they've had their bisque it's called a bisque firing or the first firing and so i'll be in touch with them and then i'll let everybody know we'll set a date uh, for those who want to come and take part in the the final stage of the the bull process and then if so, some of us do it in person and maybe some people want to be there by video, we can actually smudge that first time. We can smudge the bowls uh, together at that time too. So it'd be kind of cool. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, so. so I just put a link in the chat um, to the next Métis Kitchen Table Teachings event, which is on Tuesday. It's the story of script with Dr. Fred Shore at six o'clock and it's free and the Zoom link's there. So just an FYI if anyone's interested in that. Yeah, I'm actually interested in that. I saw that earlier and I thought that'd be a great thing to attend. And I'm going to give a really um, uh, strong uh, recommendation for Janine as well. If you've yes. ever taken anything with her, she is an amazing bead um, artist, just incredible. So it's a real treat, you know, to be able to take part in something, in part of something with her. So, yeah. All right, I'm just gonna find her the link to that event here. There it is. Oh, good, you got your name on it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I want everybody to do is get their name on it too. <laughs> if, bottom, if you feel your bottom is is uh, finished, the bottom of the bowl. Yeah. Perfect. Well, I'm going to end the recording now. Um, okay. I can figure out how to do it. Stop.